Uh, finally, This Week in Social Media is back on the This Weekend Network. I'm your new host, Jason Calacanis. I'll be joined today by the CEO and co-founder of Clout.com, perhaps the most important social media startup today. Uh, and I've also got Tyler Crowley with me for some insights. Good. You're like, what the f- did you just say? That was pretty, imp- I think that was a huge call. Uh, Welcome back, everybody. All of my RSS subscribers. You used to see Sean Percival here doing This Week in uh, social media. I'm Jason Calacanis, the CEO of the This Week in Network. And of course, I host This Week in uh, Startups. However, This Week in Social Media needed to come back, so I'm going to host the first couple of episodes. I've got Rob Tursick, an incredible futurist and smart guy who's going to co-host as well and host some of the episodes himself. Uh, And we need your help. If you want to see this show continue, We cannot do it without you. As you know, the shows here at This Weekend uh, cost money to produce because we do such a good job with the HD and the guests and all this production value. So go to thisweekinsocialmedia.co. Thisweekinsocialmedia.co. It's a plain, empty website right now. Uh, But go ahead, and you guys can pull up my screen here, and you'll see that you can become a producer of the show. Uh, and you can become an executive producer for 100 bucks a month, a producer for 50 bucks a month, an associate producer for 20 bucks a month, and a supporter for 10 bucks a month, any of those levels, or pay for the year uh, and save a little bit of money. And uh, you'll be on the back channel, you'll be on the email with us trying to uh, produce the show and figure out who the guest should be and what the agenda should be. It's a lot of fun. The This Week in Startups back channel has about 80 members now. And I think we'll probably get to something similar here with This Week in Social Media since since it's such an important topic. We need your support to keep the show on the air. Independent media is not cheap to produce, uh, and it is high quality. So please, please, please support the show so you can get more of them. Uh, um, And before we get to uh, Joe Fernandez, the CEO and the co-founder of Clout, which is an amazing startup, um, I want to also thank MailChimp, MailChimp, Uh, They are an incredible sponsor of This Week in Startups, and we thank them for helping support This Week in Social Media. Doesn't MailChimp pull in cloud? You can pull in your cloud score on uh, MailChimp, and you can figure out who are the most important members of your mailing list. Incredible feature. Um, Their new upgraded free plan includes the ability to manage lists with up to 2,000 subscribers and send 12,000 emails per month for free. A lot of companies just use that. They just use MailChimp for free. Uh, And there's no contract with MailChimp. And that is the true sign of a software as a service company that has confidence. You only pay for what you use. Why should you pay for what you don't use? Why should you get locked into a $5,000 a month contract when you don't want that? MailChimp does not try to do that because they're so confident that you're going to love their product that they just charge you based on credits and you use it as you go. They have full, full social integration and the ability to segment your list based on cloud score. We use MailChimp uh, for the launch um, newsletter, as you know, and I use it for the Jason Nation. I sent one on Father's Day about my dad and growing up in his bar. Uh, Joe Fernandez, I don't know when we met, but it was probably a year ago. Yeah. Uh, I think you told me the, you know, the, the concept of clout. Right. And I think <laughs> I told you that's no. stupid, it's not going to work. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> T-A-R, that's about right. Well, thank yeah. you for tuning in to This Week in Social Media, where I insult guests on how their startup is going to fail. No, I actually thought, like, oh, my God, what, what is the score on your social media? That's, it's kind of ridiculous. But then I have to tell you, I watched you iterate on your startup, and your vision finally made sense to me when I installed the Clout Toolbar yeah. for Twitter. Yeah, the that was definitely... Uh kind of a turning point for the company, the the Chrome extension that lets you look at Twitter and see the cloud scores in yeah. context, uh, really l- brought to life the idea of understanding who's saying what and, and the, the value behind that. Right. Hey, guys, when he starts talking about the Chrome extension, that means I probably should pull up my screen here. There you go. Come on, guys. Pull up my screen. Okay, here we go. Uh, and as I see here, I'm looking at people replying me to right now at this moment. Cloud score, 42, 24, 13. What does that mean, 42, 24, 13? So the cloud score is 1 to 100, uh, 100 being the highest. And it's really quite different than how traditionally people think about influence on social media and, and Twitter specifically. Most people think about, like, oh, how many followers does this person have? Right. But, I mean, you know better than anyone with the the, the, the Twitter uh, suggested user list. Which how, I was not part of, but like, other people were. Exactly. Just how gameable yeah. the follower account is. Yeah. Cloud score, we don't care how many followers you have. It's not even a factor in the algorithm. Ah. 
we care how people engage with you and right. who, who those people are. Got it. So here's Sean Percival, a 72. Like uh, Sean Percival, who famously worked at Mahalo for six minutes, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> then he worked for Doc Sock for six minutes as well. But here's Sean, a friend of mine, um, very socially active guy, and he's a 72. 72 is a pretty high score, correct? Yeah, 72 is huge. The average is around 20. Interesting. But here, if you look at the statistics, well, anyway, go ahead. You were saying the average well, the, is 20. Well, the average is around 20, so and uh, as you go up the curve, it gets harder and harder to move that score. Ah, so as the score gets higher, harder to move. Yeah, um, easy to move from 20 to 30, really hard to move from 60 to 70. Got it. Uh, so here, comparing myself, a 79, to Sean, a 72, I have almost 10 times as many followers, but I'm only seven points different. Yep. Total, tweet, total retweets, he has 20% of my retweets. Uh, unique retweets, I guess that's the number of unique people who have retweeted you over time. Unique mentions, likes, unique likers. So yeah, so he's so take me through on. these and tell me why these are important. So each why each statistic? Yeah. So each statistic. Let's look at uh, the retweets. So sure, the number matters, and what we think about uh, the unique retweeters and total retweets. But what you can't see here in the stats, what's going on behind the scenes, is we're looking at the influence of each person who does that retweet. So if you're getting retweeted by a bot or something, that's not gonna help you much. Ah, so the value of the, so if I get retweeted by Robert Scoble, who has a high score, that's yeah. more valuable than if it's Bambi275, and exactly. it's like one of a thousand Bambi spam Twitter exactly. accounts. Yeah, and so somebody like you who uh, has a, you know, a big presence, right? I imagine you get lots and lots and lots of just bots and random. Yeah, it seems like <clears throat> when you hit a certain amount on Twitter, of, that takes over. <laughs> that you you get followed by a lot of bots. Yes. What can you explain to the sort of people? Let's say I own a mom and pop store here. Right. And I started my own Twitter account and I got five hundred people to follow it over time. I'm six months into this. What does this mean, bots on Twitter? So uh, a bot is an account that's not controlled by a person. So somebody, who's it controlled by? A robot? So, so somebody has written some code and created an account that acts like a person. Ah, and it's a fake account. It's a fake account. Wow. So, I don't totally understand why people waste the time to create these bots. I mean, there's a bunch of schemes going on. And well, what are the schemes? I mean, what are the scams people are doing? I mean, you see, a, you have a lot of insight into this data. Why would people create these bots? I mean, in in a large mass of them, it seems like they'll create a large mass and they'll they'll network them together mm -hmm. to make themselves. But you know, it's kind of like a spam tactic. Uh, right. Could be to try to create more followers to try to link accounts to, you know, they could be trying to raise their cloud score, they could be trying to do a lot of different things. But to what end? Are they trying to get people to click on links to go to an affiliate generally page it'll be, or something? Yeah, generally, if you look at them, there'll be like a series of 10 tweets. They'll retweet random people like you. Right. And then the next tweet will be some link to a, a free, you know, free diet pills or, ah, I, or iPad contest. And then the next right. one will be a, a retweet of Scoble. So, They'll mix in what seems like good content ah, with their spam. Got it. And they're trying to get people maybe who are searching on Google or Bing, and the social s stuff comes in. Yeah, I, like there, there's so many different s schemes and why people do it. You know, some people just do it just to just to prove they can create accounts and. Ah. Kind of, so, um, what does this mean for you and, and figuring out people's scores? It's a challenge for us, but it's a challenge that we love. We have a, a team of scientists that, that gets to spend their, their time protecting the integrity of our score and looking at the data. And, and you know, every day we're discovering kind of just weird things that happen. And it might be something uh, with bad intentions, mm -hmm. like people trying to game the system. Right. But sometimes it's just stuff like in Indonesia, they use Twitter differently than us. They use it much more like a chat platform. Right. And it seems spammy, but it's just culturally a different use case. Got so we it. have to we have to alter our algorithms to like manage those. Yeah. So here it says unique retweeters and unique mentions. That means um, if an individual, I have 25,000 retweets, but it was only 14,000 people who did them. Yes. Ah. So. If I have one person who retweets everything I say, not worth as much. Not worth as much because they're just some blind. And follower. it depends on how 
yeah. you know, their influence and how many. And their influence. And how, how many. Do you it sounds very analogous to page rank for people. Is it is the inspiration page the, rank? The way yeah, I mean, we definitely, you know, we borrow from like what yeah. we can see. You know, like page rank is obviously something that influences us. Sure. And we think about the original way that Google indexed. Just right. Because I think so, this week in social media has a little bit of a casual audience. Page rank is the way Google. Index the web. Index the web. But right. the key innovation there was it wasn't just how many people link to your website, but the weight of those people. Right. Yeah. So they started with 50 sites like New York Stanford. Times right. or Stanford. Yeah. And if those trusted sites linked to you, right. then you were worthy. Right. Now, does that mean you picked your original cohort? And uh, who was in it? <laughs> so what's funny, uh, when I started Cloud, it was early 2008. So right. this was still really early days sure. on Twitter. There was a list of like 500 people who I knew were like people I followed and respected mm -hmm. that they were kind of, they were just the original, the foundation of the algorithm in terms of like looking at them and like QAing against them, making sure yeah. that, that uh, their scores kind of passed the sniff test. Ah, so making sure that. Tyler was not as important as me, right. but that Tyler was more important than Sean Percival. Exactly. Or well, whatever. It Something is. like that, yeah. Yeah, so like that was really the first test. Like, do these numbers just make sense in order? Right. From from uh, following these people. And likes is when people click on something and like what you said. In Facebook, yeah. Oh, in Facebook. Yeah. Ah, so I need to get going on Facebook because I only have a hundred I don't use Facebook. I took a year off from Facebook. And he has 1,600, so he has figured out how to get 10 times as many in Facebook. So that's where, like... That's where I'm weak. Yeah. And he's got three, four times as many unique likers. Yeah. Likes per post, 4.3 Yeah. in Facebook Yeah. to my 1.8, because I'm spamming Facebook. I'm not actually <laughs> using it as an intelligent medium. So exactly. I can actually learn how to do things better. Yeah, so this is that's a great way to look at this is benchmark yourself, understand, you know, what's the path from where you are to, to where you yeah. might want to go. Comments, 138. Is that comments on Facebook? Facebook. Yeah. He's got 850. Unique commenters, again, he's got double. Comments per post, 2.3. So he does things that are much more, uh, I guess he discusses more things. Yeah. Um, and so then if we look at, say, my cloud score, I can also see what topics? Yeah. And how does that work? So what we're doing is we're looking at all the content you create. And we're analyzing those to, to understand what is this about. Is it about startups? Is it about travel? Is it about okay. cars, poker, whatever? Yeah. Uh, and then more importantly, though, we look at not how many times. It's not counting how many times you mention poker. Hmm. It's looking at when you talk about it, is this the topic other people respond to? Ah. So you may talk about you know poker all day, but but people don't respond to it. But, but people, they do when I talk about entrepreneurship and angel investing. Exactly. So you have a bunch of keywords around entrepreneurship and angel investing. We have an ontology. We have four million topics that filter together to to create this. Where, you know, do, you, this class. where do you get that from as a startup? You can just get it from DB. DBpedia is where Pedia. we started. Yeah. And DBpedia it, is. It's a uh, Wikipedia, basically right. with the the keywords extracted out. The, right. You know, the different levels of how things connect. Like right. uh, Kobe Bryant connects to the Los Angeles Lakers, connects to basketball, connects to right. sports. So if uh, I was talking about the Lakers and other people were talking about Kobe in a reply to me, right. we that would reinforce it. You exactly. can match them together. Exactly. So this is pretty hardcore statistical analysis going on here. Again, yeah, we have a, a team of people way smarter than me, thankfully. Like, yeah. Digging How into many this. people do you have on your team now? We just hit 35 people. 35 people? Yeah. Now, um, this, you know, some people consider this number nonsense. What's the point? But I can tell by looking at here is my Twitter profile, and I have um, 115,000 followers. Scrolling down here, I see some people don't have a score yet. Does that mean they're new, if it's uh, not pulling up a score? So we score every person. We're sitting on the Twitter fire hose. Uh -huh. If a person has been retweeted or replied to, uh -huh. we score them. Wow, OK. So if somebody doesn't have a score next to them, it either means their account is brand new, or they just aren't creating content that yeah. is worth scoring. Interesting. Um, <coughs> so here I see the uh, Quigley report um, uh, from Quigley, who was on the program from Clearstone, 34. He's like a somewhat influential VC, but I would say he's definitely under the radar compared to like a Mark Suster or, or something like that. Scrolling down, I see 30s and 40s. So when I see 30s and 40s, that means they're those active. Are, those are solid scores. Those are these people. They're real people. They're real people. They're probably busy. 
mm-hmm. they they use the they use this platform, Twitter and social media, uh, casually, but they get it. Right. Now, when I see somebody is above fifty, that, that person's putting real effort in. Ah. Okay. So here is Jaj Wouters, whoever this is, who's following me, and uh, she's from the Netherlands, and uh, yeah. Who the hell knows who she is? <laughs> uh, but she's obviously tweeting a lot. Um, I'm trying to find somebody who I would really, know here. It really signifies that people are engaging with the content that a person's putting out. Exactly. Now, do you normalize for the fact that females might get a lot more attention <laughs> and the sexy avatar issue? The sexy avatar issue. Um, <clears throat> so. It sounds like a yes, but you're trying to figure out how to spin How to this. say it. So we. Yes. We do try to. So look, the answer is yes. Which tr- women versus men are different in social networks? Women and men are different, but we definitely. We look at women avatars and then sexy avatars. It's uh-huh. different, you know, because. Sure. Obviously, there's much more normal women. How do you know that? How do you know if it's sexy or not? Do you have like a group of people who eyeball and say, this is a collection we, we, of sexy? We set them aside and yeah, like check them out. No, do, no, do you really do a spot check and say, like, hey, we, we look at these 100 women and these ones are getting retweeted a lot or getting a lot of replies? You it might see, be because guys are trying to get dates with them. So it's funny, you can actually, because we do the semantic analysis sure. on the content, uh, when they're like, when people are replying, and we're doing analysis on what the replies are. There are signals in there. Like what? Like, when are we going to meet up? What you know? Ah, who are you're you? Hot. You, know, you know, stuff like that. Can you email me? Oh, like, very interesting. Those are clear signs that this is probably a spam account. Really? Or something weirds going on there at least. I get a lot of these spam accounts <coughs> like that, um, and they. What about? Do you know when people are coming from another country because they're? It's obviously English as a second language, and then do you count that against them? We don't count that against them. Uh, Again, we're we're focused, regardless of the language, just how people react. Do people react? Like, mm-hmm. what portion of the content people create drives reactions? Got it. <clears throat> um, all right, so my followers, it seems to be, it's very hard to know because so many of my followers, it's such a large group of people. Yeah. But when I look at, say, one of my lists, like I have a list called Peeps, and my Peeps are, let me see, where's my lists? Um, well, I can actually view all the people who are similar to me. And the people who are similar to me, wow, look at their scores. Dor- Dvorak, 63. Ryan Block from <coughs> GGT, 67. Dave Weiner, 71. Luik, 78. Eric Schoenfeld from Twitter, 72. Jim, these are all seem pretty uh, apparent. Yeah, those are all. 78. Patrick Norton. Um, so now we have these scores. Obviously, I can see by looking at my score some value there, right? I'm learning how right. to be a better. <laughs> social person, how to get more, <laughs> it's okay, how to get more interaction. Uh, would you like a tea with some honey, tea and honey? I can order that for you. That would be great. Can we get a tea with a little bit of honey <laughs> for my guest as he clears his throat? Sorry. No, it's quite all right, it happens. Um, I have my, my delicious tea right here. We take orders I hear out this week on social media. Um, now what, on the other side, is there for you as a business? Right. So I know I'm getting a little bit of value here. I, I can start to see, and I, when I do, I actually tell you right now, when I see somebody's a 50 or 60, I won't pay more attention to them in my stream. I don't know if that's right or wrong. I know some people consider this <laughs> like a little bit classes sometimes, Tyler, yeah. like maybe this is a little bit like, oh, uh, you're paying too much attention right. to this score. But I do watch that. Um, but what is in it for you guys? How do you make money? You have 35 people. Sorry. There must be some money being made somehow. So we have 2,500 companies <clears throat> Sorry, using our data. Ah, um, 2,500? Right. That's a lot of companies. Right. And do they pay? <coughs> Sorry. So they do pay. Ah. So, some pay. Got it. We're, we're really focused on being the standard. Got it. So you're pre-revenue in a lot of cases? A lot of cases, yeah. I got asked to be to a, go to a movie. There's a, yeah, there's a whole new separate piece yeah. for this. Like I'm getting Subway sandwiches and I'm getting You tickets. did? Yeah. I'm getting tickets to the Dodgers game. Yeah. I'm, really? I'm getting free software to like track my laptop. <coughs> You're kidding. No. You I think f- I have this because I'm right in this sweet spot. I found a blog like the, post. The 40 to 60 range yes. is the, the sweet spot. Yeah. I'm really? Like, they don't want the people over 60? Well, we figure... Those people are getting promotion the, stuff anyway. Other way, yeah, you're getting you're getting stuff in the mail from, from all over. Hmm. Um, and so I'm, brands come to us: Nike, Disney, Virgin America, Starbucks, uh, Audi, HP, and they want to reach influencers. Got it. So does that mean so you have my email because I've gone to your site and registered? Ah, okay. So because I've done that, I can get perks, and that's what these cloud perks are. Correct. 
Ah, so here's Cloud Perks. Uh, Jack Black and Kung Fu, Panda, whatever. I might be able to get a free ticket to that. Here's Subway, <coughs> Falling Skies, Men of a Certain Age, Nike Basketball, Audi. So here's Audi A8. What happens with this? How this, did this work? This was a really cool one. We actually uh, chose, I think, about 10 people, five in LA, five in San Francisco. Percival was one of them. Huh. <laughs> He's big into Audi. He's Who, got an Audi. Uh, yeah, so they got to take the A8 for a weekend. Oh, wow. And we actually gave them a stipend to like, you know, drive to Palm Springs, uh, stay oh, in a wow. hotel. And Audi just let them have the car to, and you could say, in the, you know, there's no, there's no, you have to talk about this. It's, we're it giving It was just this, we want to get to somebody who's important. Now, yeah, and let them tell the story. Ah, so if they tell the story, they tell it. If they don't, they don't. Right. The bet we make is we know you talk about this topic. We know when you talk about it, your network responds. Ah. If we put you in a good situation, you know, hopefully good stuff happens. Media's created, uh, stuff mm. happens. So now does this mean, now that there's perks involved and there's some sort of payment, does that mean people are starting to um, want to game the system? Like, do you see gaming behavior emerging now in year three of Clout? So we see people talking more about gaming. The hard thing is so much of our score is built on how influential the people are who interact with you, mm -hmm. it makes it really tough to game it. Hmm. So uh, now I see Jeff <coughs> Clapp here, actually producer, executive producer Jeff Clapp, gave me plus uh, K in entrepreneurship two minutes ago. You gave me a plus K. Thank you, Kieran. T for our guest. Woo, that is hot, hot, hot. Mm -mm -mm. Just be careful, that's very hot. Thank you. Uh, no problem. And uh, Arun Kumar added me to a list. Uh, I'm starting, so now you're gonna let people vote? Is that what's happening here? Because that seems to me like a terrible idea. So the plus K system is, it's, you know, it's really early, it's an experiment. Okay. What we're looking at is, what, are, what we care about is all the signals we can find that potentially indicate influence. Mm -hmm. And you know, imagine you tell me a great place to go to dinner tonight in Santa Monica. Shouldn't uh -huh. I be able to say you influenced me to go there? Okay, so this is a, an explicit action. It's as an explicit action. To something that's implied or something. Right, and yeah. we look at it the same way we look at everything else, is it could be gamed, people are gonna try to do weird stuff. Right. So we're gonna factor all that in. So if, if, if I'm giving plus K to everybody, my plus K isn't worth as much. So how many Ks do I get to give? You get five a day, so. Oh, okay. So there's well, here's Tyler, and I see he's got a steep decline, of course. Um, he's a thought leader with a 56. Um, and um, people believe you're influential about Los Angeles, that's true, business, technology, and Facebook. I agree with all of that. And I'll go ahead and give him um, a K, uh, and uh, I guess I can tweet that. Yep. Or I can share it on my Facebook account, so I'll just share that on my Facebook wall. Um, and now he's got a little bit extra K in that. Um, now talk about cloud style here, because here is something I found very interesting. Um, let me zoom in here so our readers can see. What exactly are we seeing here? I see participating, sharing on the top left, creating and broad on the top right, focused and consistent on the bottom right, and listening and casual. And then somewhere here is Tyler, thought leader in the top right quadrant. Right, so the idea here is you know, imagine that a cloud score of 50. Uh -huh. There's lots of paths you can take to get to that score. Uh -huh. So you might be somebody who just shares a lot of links. Right. And we would call you a curator. Ah. And people interact with you because they, they love the quality of you know, the content you're pulling together. Or you might be somebody who's like, uh, chit chats a lot with their friends. We would call that a conversationalist. Yeah, so here's a conversationalist right here. So, yeah. you know, the idea of the, you know, multiple paths to the same score we wanted to give context of behavior. Right. So this is we actually use this in our cloud perks where if you are a curator, ah. it actually doesn't really make sense for us to put you in the Audi mm -hmm. because you're not gonna talk about it. You might share links, mm -hmm. but it's a different, you know, mm. but if we were working with a publisher, you're the exact person we want to talk to. Mm -hmm. And now it has me listed as a taste maker. Right. What does that mean? Uh, so that's somebody And I guess Brian Norgard Norgard from um, What's his Namesake. startup? Namesake, mm -hmm. uh, which I've been hearing more and more about. Fellow KP company, we love them. KP, uh, yeah. Clowner Perkins, yeah. yes. Oh, look at you. <laughs> so fancy now, yeah. KP company. Uh, yes, so you, I'm a tastemaker. What does that even mean, tastemaker? So, I'm flattered, but yes, what does it mean? 
what we look at is people who, uh, who we're discovering in that, you know, with that style are, when you talk about something, whether it's, uh, you know, a startup or some technology you like or, or, you know, whatever it might be, we see the, the ripple effect of that in your network. And uh, it usually starts with, with these tastemakers. So I talk about Bitcoin? Yeah, And you exactly. see Bitcoin starts with me, and then it flows downhill for a month. <laughs> exactly. So you're actually looking at the frequency of keywords over time? Just or, like or the, links? The, not the frequency, but the origination. Ah, so is that based on links or keywords? Both. Ah, so if I am the first person to link a story from the New York Times, but then it gets retweeted a thousand times. That's going to help your score, and that's ah. going to like determine where you end up. And how that. do you get that? Because you have the fire hose, you can we're determine that. On, yeah, we're sitting on you know, all this Twitter data, we're sitting, you know, we're looking at LinkedIn, we're looking at Facebook. Right. We're just analyzing massive amounts of data. Uh, supporter Daniel Torres uh, says, will clout include YouTube following in their algorithm? Uh, there are YouTube stars For sure. who don't have huge Twitter and Facebook followings. I mean, like I, Justine, yeah. is huge on Twitter. I, I don't know, uh, huge on YouTube. I don't know if she, she's certainly not she's as not huge small. on Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. I mean, she might be huge there too, but not as huge. Right. So, face. Are you gonna include YouTube soon? So we're gonna include YouTube. Okay. Wow. Uh, is that announced or is that? That's well. Here's the announcement. We're gonna. Our goal by the end of the year is to have 20 networks. Oh my gosh. So we're we've been building a way to add like services really easily. Mm. So what comes after YouTube and? So I mean, you know, you think of Tumblr, Foursquare, yeah. Tumblr, YouTube. Like those are all mm -hmm. coming. You know, on the. Uh, so how would you? What would? the YouTube signals of quality be? Likes the, per video? The views, the shares, the subscribers. But I thought you said that the raw number was not as important, like the number of followers, but the raw number of views is, I guess. They're all... Comments, I guess? Like, we haven't, we haven't started doing the model there. I'm ah. just thinking as like a personal user, got like it, got how it, got I it. think okay. about it. Sure. Point sure. being that you're going to go real broad and, and yeah. everything online that could be a signal. Anywhere will eventually are, become a signal. Right. Anywhere people are creating user-generated content, yeah. I see as something interesting to us. So like, any, anywhere measurable. I want to not even just UGC. Yeah, say. like I want to like iPhone apps. You know, right. anywhere. So let's talk about some controversial stuff. Executive producer Jeff Clapp asks: A few months ago, uh, late February, uh, you relaunched the algorithm and cost some people seven to ten points. Um, what was the community management like for that? Did you lose people, and would you have done things differently? I mean, people were a little upset, I guess. Right. I were people that. upset? People were pissed. <laughs> really? So people actually care about their cloud score, even knowing that you guys don't know what you're doing and are trying to figure it out as you go. Like, we're, admittedly, you're trying to figure this we're out. We're figuring it out. Like, we're in the office with beer and pizza late at night, like, figuring on the whiteboard, like, arguing about this. Right. And so, yeah, like, it's we're inventing this. Right. Uh, but people take their cloud score super seriously, and we get we get tons of emails and tweets about people who like put it on their resume, and people. Oh, who, really? People who are freaking out. I would out. look at that. Yeah. You know, if you're hiring a community manager, a marketing person, a sure. salesperson, like it it makes total sense. Uh, so we make changes to the algorithm all the time. The one in February was a big one, mm -hmm. and it. Oh yeah, I got crushed on that one. I remember. Like half the people went up, half the people yeah. went down. Ah, it's like your own personal panda. <laughs> it was. Uh, uh, so, did you get it right or wrong? And how do you know? So again, I always go back. In our company, it's this balance of like intuition and science. Where like, I look at like a list of people. You know, I look at my Chrome extension. And look at my list and say like, no way, this person's not more influential than this person. But our science. So you're counting real world influence. What are the what would be the signs of real world that influence? Is, that's the end game, right? That's the end game. Right now we're on social web influence. Like, right. You know, William Buffett doesn't have a clout score, right, right. and he's clearly influential <laughs> in the right. real world. Warren uh, Buffett. Yeah. Warren Buffett. Yeah. Uh, so the the February issue, we think we think it improved the score a lot, hmm. and. Did we handle it right? <laughs> Probably not. Um, I mean, I think there's a way. I think, you're, I think maybe the good, bad news is good news kind of thing, where if, if people are talking about it because they're yeah. pissed off, there's a net positive. They, they to care, that. yeah. All right. So it's, here, a, it's a tough one, though. Like, we have to get better at like how we handle those adjustments. Yeah. So, what about transparency? That was sort of the follow up question is like, how transparent can you be? And will that. Um, 
does that make then open yeah. us up to gaming? We have we have a, a battle between you know being transparent versus people con- concerned about the the gaming aspects. I lean always towards transparency. Right. You can, I mean, when you read on our kind of cloud score description page, we pretty much list every factor in the calculation. Yeah. What we don't list is like how we weigh them and, and things ah. like that. What, what uh, about t- your title <coughs> in your bio or your, uh, now that we LinkedIn. We look at that for LinkedIn. Yeah, I was about to, cause I, I was so, with Tom at a party and I was like, Tom, I noticed my my uh, score jumped when I put CEO in my LinkedIn. Oh, <laughs> so CEO counts for something higher. Well, it should. more more counts how many other CEOs you're you're connected to. Ah, now I take an approach where I let anybody follow me. I say yes to almost every connection. Right. Because I, if I, you know how famous I am. <laughs> exactly. Uh, right. Joe, I'm very famous. Uh, it's so funny to be internet famous. I always tell people being internet famous is the same as being uh, as famous as the least famous person in reality television. <laughs> so if you take Fame in the internet industry, and like up here, it's like, oh my God, Scoble and Kevin Rose and Leo Laporte, and then somewhere after Dave Weiner is me. <laughs> that is the same as in this bubble, reality television. Yeah. Like whoever the person on, you know, VH1, who it was like first mini me, yeah. you know, took a piss on when he was drunk. You know, yeah. like, and you don't know what boy band they're from, right. but you know they're from a boy band. But it was like like the third generation of Menudo or something, yeah. <laughs> like that nobody, like in the 90s, that nobody knew about, like that's how famous you are. Yep. Uh, All right, so let me show you how to game this, right? So this is somebody told me this is how you game cloud. Okay. You tell me if this is gonna work or not. I just, you can pull up my screen here, guys. Uh, somebody told me quotes, which is something that, um, you know, like Tony Robbins is right, doing, right. doing quotes all the time. So here I have uh, a great Winston Churchill quote. You have enemies? Good. That means you've stood up for something, sometime in your life, Winston Churchill. And then I put at the end, your favorite Churchill quote, you know? That is going to get, I'm gonna guess, 10 retweets instantly. So here I go, I hit the tweet button. Now I'm gonna get 10 retweets, and I may get some people replying and telling me their favorite Churchill quote. Right. And I'm doing this in the middle of the day, one o'clock, it's four o'clock in New York. You're gonna be influential about Churchill tomorrow? <laughs> no, so how do you deal with that? Because somebody told me that they're putting three quotes a day on and getting 10 people quoting each one. Right. And other people don't even think about that. Now, do you know that that's like a technique now for getting clout? I mean, there's always, you know, the expression in Google time, you know, not that it's not Google time, but link bait. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there's, uh, this is like retweet bait. It's retweet bait. And Ah, is that your term, retweet bait? Just made it up. I love it. <laughs> Tweet bait? Uh, Tweet yeah. bait. Uh, clout bait or something. Clout bait, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, there are things that you can do that are going to drive reactions. And you might see a bump, but as you go up the, you know, up that curve to a high score and it gets harder and harder to move up. Right. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, uh, it might so help you get from a 20. If I did this 20... 10 times a day, it's not gonna help a 79 get to an 89. No, it might help a 23 get to a 26. Gotcha. But, so you've taken that into account already. And you know, and again, I also, from the scope of where our company is, I think about it as like, you know, if you did a Google search in 98, 99, the results were good, but not amazing compared right. to where we are now. Yeah. Like, that's the path we have to go on. And stuff like this, sure, it's not, it's not perfect, but like yeah. you know, we, we think about these things and, and so um, if you had more information like IP addresses, which Facebook has, right, or Twitter has, um, you also have devices people are using. You can take that into account if they're a web user, a BlackBerry user, iPhone user. That doesn't influence cloud, but it is interesting or no? So I think of things, uh, maybe LinkedIn's a good example, where LinkedIn isn't transactional the same way Twitter or Facebook is, Mm -hmm. but knowing you're a VP at Boeing Ah. is interesting to us because we then can assume you have some influence about aeronautics. Ah. So not everything has to be, things can be attributes that are interesting. So, you know, IP address, like, oh, you live in this area, 
Right. Like, so you're amongst uh, the affluential aerospace people in California. Right. Like, uh, or that's probably helpful. Versus in Shanghai. Right. Uh, device. Like, there's just... Everything's a signal. Some of them you have to throw away. So when will them. I be able to search people by cloud? I mean, because let's face it, that's what everybody wants to do. That's the end game here. Everyone, you're building a search engine of people. Isn't that true? Basically. So what? But the, there is no search engine to your product yet. The the request, the call we get every day is, here's the topic. I want the list of people. You know, Motorola calls. Right. Them. Give me <laughs> BlackBerry users. Right. Because I want to sell them an Android phone. Yep. And I want the most influential first. Right. So, But you don't <clears throat> provide that yet. What we've done instead is our Cloud Perks program, ah. where they can pay us and we reach them. Like, we don't sell list of people. Right. What we don't want, imagine you know, you're an influencer. Yeah. Imagine we are selling your name to everyone. Right. But in a way, you are, by putting my score public, you put your score they can figure out how to get me through some other way. They can just reach me over Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn. Right. They could, they could, could they, because they know my Facebook account, they could then target me. Can Facebook target an ad to an individual user? No. But they could target people. So are you going to, like, sync up with ad networks and let people target by cloud score? Like, Facebook has a very awesome ad system. Right. What if they could say, I only want people with this cloud score, and it costs an extra ten cents per click. Yeah. I mean, those are. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I mean that's. There's lots of interest on the advertiser side, on the ad network side, on the like. So how close are you in discussions right now to do something like that? We're. You'd you can to. tell us. We're, I mean, we're. <laughs> we're you have to be. We're playing around with a lot of things. We're exploring so, a lot of things. So and that is it. That's it. You're not going to make a search engine of people. You're going to allow cloud to be. Leverage so people can target ads to people. I mean, when I think of what we're building, I want to build something that's part of the fabric of the social web. Mm -hmm. Between our API and you know, the distribution we have and the data we have, like, I want every page and every person to interact with the cloud with cloud in some right. way. And I don't know if a people search engine, like, ultimately. Right. That would be someone else might want to build. Well, that, a consumer, but, yeah, a so. consumer. So they, how would people do that? They have to go get your permission to use the cloud score, right? Cloud score is not available freely to everybody for any use, is it? Well, I mean, our API is pretty open. Oh, really? So, so we can start building this kind I of use, stuff and I go use crazy. It on squeal. You do. Yeah. So when somebody squeals on a yeah. restaurant, yes, you will tell the person their yeah. Twitter score. Yes, their cloud score. Their cloud score, because you know their Twitter account yes. or their Facebook account. Yes. Oh wow! And do you give them context because they don't know what a cloud score is, probably? Right. If it's so a local business. If, if it's like a your average cafe manager doesn't quite yet know the concept of cloud, right. so we'll change that into like real English vernacular and say ah, you'll take the influencer. We'll we say, believe this person. No, an influencer. no. We say online influence is high, low, medium, very uh, high. So, so but you if you it. if you click on that link, it'll take you to their cloud page and you can uh, learn all about it. So it's like the social credit score. Yeah. And you're saying. Yeah. What is the most interesting thing people have built with the API? I mean, this is very interesting what Tyler's <clears throat> doing with Squeal. But what are, what are other interesting things people have done? We've seen some really crazy stuff, like hotels in Vegas where it's built in the reservation system. Oh, uh, yes. This is the uh, hotel called, um, Palms, I know. Palms, Palms is one Palms of them. Palms is yeah. one of them, right. So there's a bunch of different you know, hotels doing stuff. But basically, you check Do they ask for your Twitter, or they just ask your name? They may email. ask for your Twitter, but we can also do some email matching. Yeah, and you know, so if you check in, they hit us. We tell them how influential you are, and they the say the Cosmopolitan. They say is like constantly asking me to stay there over Twitter. Right, like so they want to reach people like you, but if you walk Go into the door and check that, in, and then I'll <laughs> then you take my room, take my resi, <laughs> right. take my resi rest. Uh, so really, the palms. So like you know, then they're they're upgrading your room or palms sending you to a show. The first to do anything with they're the cloud. super yeah. yeah they're super forward leaning. They're yeah. you know family. So that business. means I can get a I can get a reservation at the club there at Rain or whatever. They're it is. like yeah like they're you know, if you're going to a club or going to a can restaurant. Can I wear my cloud score on my lapel? Because I would <laughs> like to get to the front of the line everywhere. I love this service. I think this is great. I love elitism. I love people <laughs> getting favoritism. You earned your cloud score. Eff it. You well, should like, get. I should. This should be no line. If you have over seventy, you shouldn't be. You agree. You shouldn't have to wait in line. I mean, think about it. Like we're people. 
There's a lot of people who like say like, oh, this is elitism and that's a, that's a problem. Right. Yeah, those are twenties. <laughs> Screw them. I think 30s. about it as like Tyler and I. T armed is fifty. I armed by seventy nine. Friggin twenties. We're one hundred twenty <laughs> together. We're one hundred. We're one hundred eighty together. We can go anywhere. Let's do this. So Yo, I think about pop it. Some this is J Gary Vaynerchuk, by the way. Last time he was here, yeah. made a prediction that three years from now, right. you're, you're going to say, I'm going to go for a run. You're going to make a tweet and say, I'm going to go for a run. Sure. And then tomorrow. And the next day, you're going to have three pairs of sneakers absolutely. at your house. Absolutely. As, as it should be. Right. This I agree. This is key to what he was talking about, no doubt. Right. There has to be some mechanism. It's the no, social yeah. credit score. Yeah. Social credit score. So uh, I think we're segmented every day by companies. And usually it's by how much you spend. Right. Or if it's a nightclub, it's like how good looking you are. Strange, arbitrary. Uh -huh. And with cloud, no, yeah, they're criteria that they need. Yeah, but the club needs what they can. The club needs pretty people. It's the best they could do. The club needs pretty people. Harvard needs people with high aptitudes, so that True. people don't realize that the education there means nothing. I'd put it the other way around. I think Harvard needs more pretty people. But go ahead. Yeah, that's true. Good point. <laughs> that's an interesting insight. But with cloud, we're all. Everyone starts on the same playing field. Right. Like, if you have a phone. You can create content and distribute it on Twitter and right. build an audience and build trust and authority and hmm. a reputation and influence, and that can be leveraged, you know, in lots of different ways. Um, I'm looking in the uh, in the chat room here for questions, but I can't see it that far <laughs> from here. Um, so, uh, Peer Index started after you, correct? Yeah. And it seems like they photocopied your site, like down <laughs> to the design. So, as an entrepreneur, peerindex.net, what is it like for you to see somebody so blatantly rip off your product? Uh, I mean, it was pretty funny. There, I've met uh, some of the guys. Oh, from no, the but team. look at this here. Boom! It's like they 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 did a number out of a hundred. Yeah. I mean, they basically. I mean, maybe you don't feel comfortable saying it, but they did rip off your idea. Yes or no? The, I mean, That's we were yes. inspirational. All right. <laughs> so now, what are they doing? Um, and uh, look at this executive perks card. What? Yeah. <laughs> they have an executive perk. They, so now they're stealing your cloud offers. So uh, uh, you have a copycat. What's it like to go up against a copycat? Uh, As an entrepreneur, it motivates the team. Really? I mean, it just everyone gets fired up and wants to destroy. So good. We'll take it. Um, so their number seventy seven, almost exactly my cloud number, <laughs> seventy nine. I mean, are they just copying you guys exactly? How do they get the exact same number? I have no idea. <laughs> this is interesting. This little Venn diagram, I guess. Biz, political. I guess they're doing topic areas it's where like I a exist. South America. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> uh, audience, authority, uh, activity. Topic, social network, entrepreneurship. Yeah, it seems like they generally get stuff right. Here's something interesting. They're looking at my sources of my tweets. That's an interesting uh, little um, right uh, thing to look at the. I mean, we look at the domains. We look at that all I'm your links, and so we go run semantic analysis on yeah. those. Obviously, I'm going to tweet about Mahalo and Tech Meme and Launch, of course. Yeah. The why is YouTube not in there? I, I do YouTube all the time. It's weird. The scale that we operate at. Uh huh. Is like you know eighty million scores updating every single day. Right. We did. I, I think they had a blog post that they did like a million API calls in a month. Yeah. We did one point six billion. Wow. So like. So clearly just, you're winning. So you don't care. Yeah. That's I mean, fine. That's understandable. Um, so uh, Kleiner Perkins has invested in the company. They're very big on social. Um, I mean, shouldn't this be part of like Facebook or Twitter? I mean, it feels like they should be integrated as a piece of those services. Well, that's, that's a, you've come a long way from this won't work or this is a bad <laughs> idea. <laughs> well, no, you know, I, I think it's like I always thought that those guys would get this problem solved first. Well, I'll, t well, I'll tell you what, I was like, how is the, how, how I was, was at Twitter? Yeah. At lunch, and some senior executives yes. were arguing with some. These were sea level engineers yeah. arguing with, right? And they were, and the word people rank came up several. We need to build people rank, and the another, the other person on the other side was like, didn't want to do it, and they were going back and forth on this. So was, and this was, that was. I'll tell you why I think that this is. Not too far after. It was early 2009, April. I'll tell you 2009. why it's a great service, because I am beating Tony Robbins by. <laughs> 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 I mean that is. I mean, I am somewhere in the Tony Robbins zone, so I feel like it's, I, could, I could tell you I'm slightly more influential than Tony. <laughs> or, or less, depending on the day. 
<laughs> the so when I look at Twitter and Facebook, imagine Twitter puts a score out, and you know it's only going to include Twitter. Well, and you it's not going to include all the other factors. That's well, true. Imagine, it would be cross service. Imagine you feeling that JetBlue is not answering your question because Twitter told them you're not important enough. Ah, uh, like the va- Twitter's trying to go mainstream. Right. The value collapses for like a huge. He- heaven forbid Twitter goes away at some point. And then, then that system goes away. If but Facebook this, this did is it, a, there'd be independent like, of whatever social network yeah, is coming. Yeah, yeah. So how does this is for producer uh, Rodrigo? Um, how difficult is it to make sense of what people are talking about when people can talk about such a diversity of topics? Like I was talking about today getting views on YouTube, but yesterday I was talking about being a dad, and the day yeah. before I'm talking about Green Lantern. I mean, how do you make sense of all that to understand influence? It's definitely tough, uh, especially when you think of a tweet being 140 characters or a Facebook status being a sure. short. Like, there's just not a lot of context to talk right. about. Like, an example I always talk about is the show Lost. Right. Are you talking about the show Lost or you lost your keys? Right. And like, all these things are really tricky when you don't have when you don't have enough context. Yeah. So, on any given tweet, it can be hit and miss. But we look at so much content over time mm. that eventually it filters up. What should businesses do in terms of embracing this technology? If you own the Brooklyn Bagel Company, if you owned Lemonade, the you know hot little cafe in right. Brentwood or Venice, if you own the you know hot coffee intelligentsia or coffee in Venice or whatever, what well, what would you do as the proprietor if you had access? You had you know a, a register there that could show people's cloud score. So I would love to know you know if I'm running a coffee shop. I would love to know who are the 15 people in a five mile radius that I need to be best friends with. Ah. Like, who are the people I need to make sure, you know, I'm like getting feedback from. Got I'm, it. Like, get, I'm inviting them. So to there might be to... new customers within five miles, uh, within a mile of your coffee shop. You don't even know that Tyler Crowley lives around the block from your right, and he's, coffee you know, shop. Right, and he's talking about, you know, he loves the other coffee shop. How do I like. How do you influence him? How do I influence him? How do I like get so that's some time not even him? knowing. That's not even knowing he's there. That, that, that's not even knowing that he came into the store. That's knowing that he should come into the store. So, so that's the first thing. I want the people to come into the store that Got I don't it. know. And once they're there, I want to know like you know who's the whale that just walked in. Right. And, is that the big? Is that the Moby Dick of yeah, coffee? And you know, I mean, we're talking. You know, we're talking to credit card companies about like you swipe your card. I want the score to show up on the register. Wow. And you know maybe you're getting like a second cup, or wow. you're getting your stuff carried to the car for you, or whatever it is. So, what about an app? You know, I had, it's interesting. I had this issue come up because I didn't have my ID with me one time, and I told the person to pull up my Wikipedia page because it's got my photo on it, and they <laughs> they were like, oh, "No, we we understand." I was picking up tickets, you know, and I was like, "Oh, you know, hey, you can just pull up my Wikipedia page," you know, like. Is this going to get to that point where you think like a credit card will swipe or somebody pulls out their iPhone and shows their cloud score and the person's like, oh, mon dieu, we're so sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, we live in an attention economy. Right. And your ability to move, to activate a network, an audience yeah. of people is incredibly valuable. Mm. As valuable as, you know, anything else that you do. Yeah. And more valuable in a lot of cases to other yeah. people. So I, know I think this crosses into the real world. I think big it becomes time. big time. Like I want every customer service, every call center. I get yeah. I get pissed when CNN is scrolling tweets and it's not showing clout scores. Ah, uh, you want like, it to be there, yeah. Yeah, like we want we believe it should be everywhere. Well, clearly that's the case. I'm wondering, can you well, in your service a really clever use case you can, just came up with though is because on CNN you get Farmer well, of John. course. They'll, they'll no, put, but let me tell you something. Specific they'll, about the topic, like if Russia does this, right? Oh, here's what's their entrepreneur a, score? Um, no, no, what's here, their Russia score? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always found it that as a joke because when I was in, living in New York, they constantly, uh, you know, I'm good on TV. I can give a good quip or something like that. I can be clever and uh, got a good soundbite here and there. And people were like, "Oh, you're the soundbite machine. We need to have you on this afternoon." These producers. I'm yeah. talking about CNN, Fox. You know, yeah. like a lot of major news. And they said, we want you to pick a stock. I said, I've never traded a stock in my life. That doesn't matter. Just pick a stock. <laughs> Perfect. I was like, you want me to pick a stock? I was like, OK. And I, I went in, and I was like, um, buy you know, X because you know, their whatever is Y. Right. And they were like, there you have it, folks, Jason Galaganis. Lock of the week. And I'm like, I cannot believe I just gave a stock pick. On TV. On TV, <laughs> and I have no clout to be yeah. doing that. Yeah. 
Hmm. Yeah, so I want, you know, New York Times, when they when they list a company, they show their stock symbol. Why don't they show their cloud score when they put a person? Right, right. Uh, so. Now, what about appealing my cloud score? Because I went down two points. And I want to, like, I would like, I prefer to be in the 80s. And right. now I'm a 79. I'm a little <laughs> disturbed. No, I, I don't care. But, um, is there a, a pro, if this becomes as important as you're talking about, like a credit score, and it feels like it's starting to amongst right. people, like, it's going to affect my reservation at the Palms. It's a big deal for me. Right. Um, how do I appeal it? Is there an appeal process? So where we are right now, uh, we're transitioning. We, we're, we understand how important the score is. The big thing we're doing from a product standpoint is what we're calling score insights. Right now, you see your score. You see some basic stats. But like we did that analysis of you versus Sean, right? And we were kind of just talking. We were gonna we're gonna be able to say this is exactly why your score went up or down. This specific ah. tweet, you know, amplified this much by these people, and it caused your score. Are these hundred tweets nobody responded to, and your score is drifting down? That, Interesting. These score insights are coming in the next couple months. Uh, so that's the first step. Mm. From there, as so you're we, gonna teach people. In a way, if this takes off the way I think it will, and I think the way Tyler agrees it will, people are going to start changing behavior in order to have influence. We want people to understand the things that drive reactions and drive engagement. Right. Does that and mean everybody's going to be Winston Churchill quotes all day? I hope not. Uh, we're gonna, I mean, the good thing is we can, you know, we can mold the system in a lot of ways to, to reinforce behavior that is positive. Well, and look at this here. I, I did my little experiment before about Winston Churchill, and here we go. <coughs> Jordan uh, mm -hmm. Golson, who was a famous blogger, a medium famous blogger, uh, he tweets me back his two favorite quotes. Vance of 36 gave me a quote back. Sumita gives me a couple quotes back. Look at all these people quoting me back. Um, yeah, I mean, I've got a bunch of people with decent scores, 40s and 50s, replying. Right. So what do I got now? I got to do this every day. I got to feed the tweet. Well, Where else I mean, my score is gonna go down? But you also can think about like a, a quote once in a while. Your mm -hmm. network might like. You start right. doing it two or three times a day. All you right. just get annoyed. Um, this has been fascinating. I think uh, cloud. I mean, it just shows you. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nobody knows what they're talking about. When you have a visionary entrepreneur like yourself, I give you a lot of credit for persevering I mean, and I having like the vision. I hundred guys and got, it took a hundred pitches to get 37 angel investors. Yeah. So yeah, you just got to keep pitching. You got to keep <clears> pitching <throat> and people believed and I, I, you know, it's, I think that that is part of being an entrepreneur and yeah. I salute you for being so goddamn resilient <laughs> that you actually figured it out. You didn't listen to the naysayers, including myself, because you know, listen, what, so some people are like, oh my God, we need to get your opinion on this. I'm like, my, what is my opinion worth? Not, right. Nothing. It's just one guy's opinion. Really, the market's the opinion that matters. Right. And it's amazing to me how a service can just turn on a dime because of one little tweak. Uh -huh. I think everybody changed their mind about your service when the Chrome toolbar came out. That's funny. I That's believe awesome. it was your <laughs> first, I think it's your South by Southwest moment. The toolbar? Good the to toolbar know. is. Uh -huh. So how you can get it into other places, I really think is the critical thing. Like, like you said, the credit card to me, yeah. if it showed my past year's cloud score, yeah. if you averaged my cloud score from the past six years and you could have a credit card that had my cloud score on it, I, you'd trust me, I would use it. Right. Because I want people, a guy like me wants people to see it at 79, 80. <laughs> you know, like I literally would use a cloud credit card. Yeah. That's awesome. My God, you should own, a, this is the greatest idea ever. Have you thought of having a cloud black card for people above 79, because since I'm a 79 now. No, for people above whatever get you know, people above 80 get a black, people between 70 and 80 get a platinum, Tyler gets a we green. Actually, we have them in the office. Like, we've had them designed and made, like... Oh, really? Like, we're, they're prototypes, and we're, like... So, Clout, we, Clout will make credit cards. I don't know about that. Come on, give me but, a... I'm begging for a scoop here. <laughs> Clout will make credit cards, yes or no? I'm, it, we'll let be, me, I can, I we'll can be, always tell. Here we we'll go. be Watch. integrated with some... We'll be a point of sale system at some point, whether it's through our own credit card, we partner with a credit card, we partner with a point of sale purchase. I want your score to show up in re like transactions. I got you. Tal, you want to see this? Let me show <laughs> uh, you how mm -hmm. poker works. Let mm -hmm. me show you how understanding. I'm look at Joe. <laughs> Will you release Joe Fernandez, CEO and co-founder of Clout, a credit card for Clout in the next 12 months? Maybe. Right now, it's a no. yes. <laughs> I tell you what I can tell you. I saw it. You looked down, right to the left, and you you were about to give the answer. You said maybe, but you went. You looked down. 
That's it. You look down at your, his <laughs> shoes. When you look at the shoes, it's a it's yes. A, it's a yes. It's a yes. No, whatever. I mean, it's a great <laughs> idea. He was mentioning before Let's wrap we got up. Up. Yes. before we got to dinner. He was saying. And I don't want to reveal anything you don't want to reveal, but there's a... a no, reveal it. We're trying to get scoops on the show. A, a, Give us something, I said, Joe. It's for him to reveal. It's not for me to Give break. Give me a reveal. Because I'm, I'm talking about cloud. I'm no, trying to link to the No, but there's something like the, the Chrome moment. toolbar that is even We're going to blow out the toolbars also. All right. Okay. So there's, let me explain to you what I'm trying to do Scores going here, everywhere. Okay. Let me explain to you what's going on. <laughs> I need a scoop because now when I have the show, mm -hmm. I put it on Hacker News. Mm -hmm. Like I had Kickstarter confirm they have $2 million in revenue going through Kickstarter a week. Wow. So then my headline on Hacker, because I'm good at these headline things, I know <laughs> how it works. So I made a headline today on Hacker News. Uh, and I said, um, um, Kickstarter generating two million in pledges a week, founder. And I put it on Hacker News, and I, it had like a really good, it's not up there now, but it got a lot of play. Anyway, um, continued success. I think cloud is really just tremendous. Appreciate it. And the toolbar will be able to show me more. More. Okay. Anywhere anywhere I'm at mentioned, anywhere I'm linked to Facebook, it will show my cloud score. I mean we that's basically what you're gonna do. Yeah, right? we wanna see it everywhere. We wanna if you're in Facebook you see scores. If you're Okay, so you're gonna add you Facebook to the toolbar, that's good enough. And right. you're gonna that's a good enough scoop. Awesome. Good. You gave us something. And also what about if I'm on the New York Times and my name's mentioned? Will you do that? Uh, we w that will be coming at some point. Okay, cool. All right, so that got something. Yeah. The toolbar will work on the New York Times <laughs> and on Facebook and on LinkedIn. Beautiful. I got something. LinkedIn awesome. too. There's of okay. course. Yes. There's unlimited. I mean, you, the other issue is how many data points does a person have? Their phone number and their credit card and all these things are tied to that individual and identity. So at some point, your phone number, when you call the call center, they're going to be able to do that. And your credit card, when you go to a retailer, is going to have that. It's just, like you said, it's this whole other layer to the we social wanna, web. Yeah. I mean, we want to be, I said this earlier, in the fabric of the social web. It's pulling in as much data, pushing data everywhere, touching every site and every person. Uh, Joe Fernandez, CEO and co-founder of Clout. Thank you for uh, being on this week in social media. We're Thank also going to release this. Thank you for show. I know. Awesome. <laughs> and you'll also be, we're going to release this as well as a This Week in Startups episode. So you get both. Great. You're the first guy to get two. It's a, but we're trying to get the This Week in Startups audience to embrace This Week in social media as well. Um, and continued success. It's great. And you're also a SoCal. You're a Los Angeles company. Well, we're in San Francisco now. Oh, we are here. you moved. We moved. You got the pressure, huh? The, the pressure. Kleiner, was it the Kleiner guys who no, got No, it was you? before that. Uh, but uh, Who was the angel investor who was advising you a lot? Tom. Tom. McInerney. Tack McInerney. He's a good guy. Yeah. He was the one who started pitching me on it hard. Like, you have to take a second look, Jason. You have to take yeah. a second look. See, this is a, He's come on a CEO This is a now, huge right? mistake. I would have, just to me, understand the pain. If I had invested in the angel round, the difference between the angel round and the Kleiner round was 10x? About. <laughs> oh, God, I take myself that poi pounder. I'm such an idiot. 10x? If I put yeah. 25 Gs in, if I put a cranberry that in, I would have like had six 200, months between those. I would have had $250,000. Oh, <laughs> oh, God, that hurts. I got to do that every time I miss an angel investment. I hit myself with the poi pounder. All right, uh, Tyler, thanks for coming in and doing the show. Thanks. We'll see you all next time. But I have to tell you, we cannot do this show without you. We will not do this show without you. You need to go to thisweekinsocialmedia.co and become an executive producer. What that means is you'll have clout. You'll be able to, on the email list, on the back channel, converse with myself and the producers and suggest guests, suggest topics, and influence the show. And also, you'll have friends. I mean, that's really the thing about the This Week in Startups back channel. It's 80 people who have become these great friends. They're all going out to dinner together. If you're lonely and you want to network with like-minded people, that's what these back channels is about. I mean, there are a lot of lonely people out there, Tyler. You can, you know more than anybody, Tyler, about how lonely you can get out there as an entrepreneur, right? And now in social media, come and uh, be part of it. All right. Anyway, thank you. We'll see you next time.